Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a hands-on preview of the Sony RX100 Mark 7. Now we've had our hands on this camera for the last couple of days and this is just a preview video. We will be doing a real world review in the future when we can open the raw files and take this out there into the real world to see how it handles in that exact situation. Now we are filming this with the Sony RX100 Mark 7 in 4K because there is an unlimited time limit now to record in 4K, whereas before you only got five minutes in 4K. And secondly, one of the major features they added to this camera is a microphone jack. So now that we can plug into the microphone jack, we can record using my microphones right into the camera. Now, you'll also notice we can't exactly attach anything in terms of a microphone to the top, the bottom, the side of this camera because there's no hot shoe or cold shoe or any place to put anything shoe related. Even my shoe, I wouldn't want to put it there. But the reason you can't do that is because on top you have a flash that pops up as well as the electronic viewfinder. So it's great that they added this feature to do a mic jack, but you're going to need some third party accessory to attach your microphone uh, pack or microphone to the camera. In this case, we had to attach it down here to the tripod with some gaff tape. Now let's talk about the body. The RX100 Mark 7 is basically the same body as the RX100 Mark 6. It's identical, except for the fact that this one does not have the place to put in your microphone. Now in terms of build quality, this is a nicely built camera. It's heavy. It has a ton of technology built into it, but I do not recommend dropping it. In terms of dropping it, it isn't a good idea. And my ex dropped my RX100 Mark IV when she was in Italy. It didn't break, but the dial is stuck in manual, which is good for me, but I do not recommend that you drop it. Use this wrist band that comes with it so that you can do this with it and not drop it because it's not easy to hold on to and you may it may slip and fall. Now, this is where the viewfinder is. I love the electronic viewfinder in mirrorless cameras. The problem with a camera like this being so small is that the electronic viewfinder is going to be super small. I love using it. Other people are going to want to use the back of the screen. I don't recommend it. But what's cool with the EVF is that you just press it down and it goes away. In the past, you had to actually pop it up and pull out the viewfinder and then push it back in to pop it back down. In this case, you no longer have to do it. But it is a nice and compact body and it is packing a 24 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 to 4.5 Zeiss lens. That is the same lens that you found in the older version, which is this version that I'm holding right here and the version that we're using right now, same exact. Now the older version, going back to the Mark V, that one had a 24 to 70, 1.8 to 2.8. Now personally, I like having the 24 to 70, 1.8 to 2.8, especially when you have a smaller sensor camera because it gives you a little bit better depth of field. But in my opinion, I rather have 200 millimeter reach and trade off the aperture for being able to reach out and grab the photos that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to capture. On the back of the camera, you will find a tiltable 180 degree touch screen that you can't exactly touch when you get into the menu system, which I don't know why they limit it to that. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is the fact that this camera does not have a headphone jack. You have a microphone jack, but not a headphone jack. And those people who wanted to vlog and have headphones and monitor their audio, well, you'll just have to deal with it. And you've got one thing out of two. That's not bad. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty of the sensor inside of this camera. You have a newly developed one inch stacked 20.1 megapixel sensor. This is for all intents and purposes, a mini A9. Now don't confuse it with an A9 because this doesn't have a full frame sensor, clearly but it is like a mini A9 because it shoots blackout free photos at 20 frames a second. Now the older version did 24 frames a second and it, they said it had a blackout, though I didn't really notice it because what it does is it kind of just shows you the preview as you're shooting. I didn't have a problem shooting that in the past, but 20 frames a second in RAW, even RAW plus JPEG, it still does it and it's fast and it's pretty damn cool. 
Let me jump in here real quick and say, are you looking to speed up your raw workflow or are you looking for some new creative looks? We created FroPack 1, which are 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com slash presets. Just play with the sliders, look at the befores, look at the afters, and if you'd like to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Here's some images that I took with the RX100 Mark VI that were edited using FroPack 1. Now let's get back to the video. Now inside this camera, you will find an adapted Bions engine. Now it's not the same Bions engine that you find in the A9, it's adapted the technology to fit into this body and that helps with the speed and blackout free and all the autofocus that we'll be talking about in just a second. So basically the way you can look at this is they took the RX100 Mark VI and technology from the Sony A9 that is available now with the new updates to the A9 and put it into this Mark 7. In terms of ISO, you have 100 to 12,800. When you start to get to 1,000 or 1,250 or 1,600, you may not wanna go much further than that because this is a smaller one inch sensor. The higher you push your ISO, the less quality you're gonna end up getting. It's gonna be more noisy and more grain. And part of the issue is that your zoom lens only goes to 4.5. So just like we said, we needed more light. We brought in a ton of light for this so that we could keep the ISO down to make the video look as good as it does. How many focusing points does this camera have? You have 357 phase detect AF points, which is up from 315, and this one covers 68% of the viewfinder, up from 65. Not that that's that big of a deal, because most of the time you're gonna be letting the camera do all of the thinking, because this is a point and shoot, and the autofocus is really fantastic. Speaking of autofocus, the acquisition of autofocus in this camera is two hundredths of a second. That is the fastest of any Sony camera, including the Sony A9. One of the coolest features of this camera is the fact that you can shoot up to 90 frames a second for seven photos. Now, let's put that into perspective. If you were to shoot for one whole second and could get 90 frames, that would be pretty amazing. But this camera can't do it, but what it can do is a burst at 90 frames a second for seven frames. You could try and capture the peak action like this. It's like, <clears throat> It's done before you even know it. Now it does lock in the exposure and autofocus on the first frame, but it's over before you know it. Kind of like most people's sex lives. What's also cool is that it can shoot in JPEG or give you RAW files. So it's giving you seven massively fast shot RAW files for whatever need you have. Now, I'm not sure what the actual usage of this is. I mean, it's pretty cool that you can shoot that fast, but it's so fast that the action that it's freezing better be fast as well. Now let's talk about the autofocus of this camera. It's not normal that you talk about the autofocus of a point and shoot as if it really matters that much, but in this case it does because it adds Sony A9's real-time tracking as well as real-time IAF for humans like me and animals like animal you know, from the Muppet Babies. Uh, but it also adds that feature, real-time IAF tracking for video, which is what we have it set to right now. So it's uh, hopefully working as I move in and move out and move in. Hopefully it's tracking me the whole time. Now in my tests using this, watching the real-time tracking happening, it is so blistering fast. It is like a mini A9 to have this autofocus system in it. Now flipping over the paper, let's move to some of the video features and wrap up this video. Steven loves when I get literal. I just love saying flipping over. I love explaining exactly what I'm doing. Unlimited 4K record time. We tested it and it did 60 minutes without a problem, no overheating, whereas the old camera did five minutes before you had to stop recording. Now there's a new active mode for stabilization when you're in 4K. It's using optical as well as algorithms for digital stabilization, which gives you more of a gimbal feel when you're walking. When you look at the footage, you can see the difference between the old one and the new one. It is much more stable. Now, if you're somebody who likes to do time-lapse, you can do time-lapse with interval shooting inside of this camera. Now, an old feature that we liked in the Mark V is the fact that it had an ND filter. So if you're outside shooting video or even shooting photos and you need to cut back on some of that light, you could do it. 
but I think that's a feature that they've put to rest in this camera or in future cameras that you probably won't see an ND filter. Now for most people, not a big deal, not a deal breaker. Now in terms of slow-mo shooting, you can shoot up to 960 frames per second slow-mo, 480 slow-mo, and 240 slow-mo, not to be mistaken with slow-mo, he's not here today, it's his day off. An interesting feature that they added that they borrowed from the Sony a7R4 is that you can make the autofocusing point now red instead of just gray. It's nice to see that it's red, so that's small. And they did some tweaks to the menu system. They moved some things around, made it easier to find some things, though some people will still say it's a Sony menu and it's not that good, whatever. You learn it, it's easy. But what's cool is if, say, the, the title or something is too long, it will actually scroll so that you can see the word that before was cut off. You can now see it. Also, if you're not sure about something in the menu, there is a question mark option. Except to activate the question mark, you have to hit the trash can. You hit the trash can, it then brings up your menu. It's actually smart, and most cameras do that these days, so that is nice to have. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking for a turnkey solution for your own online portfolio, use what I use. Go to squarespace.com slash photo to get a 14-day free trial with no credit card needed. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now let's get back to the video. Now how much is it? It's 1200 bucks and it's gonna be available in August. So it's gonna be available shortly for 1200 bucks, which means, in my opinion, that the Mark VI is gonna drop to around $1,000. Now, who is this camera for? This is a camera for, the, let's say, a, a, a photographer who doesn't wanna travel around with all of their gear and something heavier, but they still want the best quality they can get and be able to shoot 20 frames a second, 4K video unlimited with a microphone jack, which you didn't have before or for those people who want one camera to travel with and have a wide angle at 24 and 200 millimeters out on the zoom and they're going on this trip to Alaska or wherever old people go when they travel. It's mostly for old people, but it's also not mostly for old people. It's for anybody that doesn't want to take around a bigger camera and doesn't want the shitty quality of a cell phone. They want something more. It's expensive at 1200 bucks, but it's very good. Look, 1200 bucks is still a lot of money, but obviously if you can afford it, this is probably the best point and shoot that is on the market in this size. We did a real world review of the RX100 Mark VI in New York City and got some fantastic results in Central Park. And we can't wait to take this one out into the real world to show you what it can do. It's gonna be very similar to this one. So do you buy the six or do you buy the seven? Well, if you have 200 extra bucks to throw around, you might as well go with the new one. If you need to record video and have audio go into the camera, you're definitely going with the new one. If you need the unlimited record time, you go with the new one. If you don't, save the money. This one's pretty good as well. So that is a preview. We're looking forward to doing a real world review. Hopefully you enjoyed this. That's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.